Okay, Great Lakes Power Stroke World Nation. It's not quite World Nation, but... All right, guys, I see conversations a lot about what is tuning, what does it mean to me, and why do I need it, want it, what could I do with it? Okay, there are two types of tuning you could do. You could buy a flash tuner offline, or you could have the engine custom tuned using a platform that actually gets into the nitty gritty of, um, of how the ECU operates. So, there are many different platforms. There are um, aftermarket ECUs. Uh, there are complete ignition, or uh, excuse me, ignition and uh, fuel injection systems that are totally aftermarket. And then there are systems or platforms like HP tuners, which is what I use, that um, utilize your stock ECU and make changes to it through its hardware and software, okay? So, in each one of your vehicles, whether you drive a Ford, whether you drive a Dodge, whether you drive a Chevy, whether you drive a Nissan, blah, 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 you have an ECU. And that ECU is in charge of doing one, well, many important things, but what it's trying to do in terms of running your engine and transmission is it's trying to take in a series of data from the engine and from the vehicle speed sensors, and it's trying to, well, temperature sensors as well, because there, there's a lot of different things that it uses to keep itself alive. That's why these new vehicles are so reliable. They work to preserve each other in terms of the engine, preserving the trans, and the trans while trying to shift to keep you off the red line. So, in a tune, or in a calibration, there are... There, generally speaking, you have an engine portion, engine. You have a diagnost, you have diagnostics, you have transmission, so all the different you know ways the transmission can be controlled to get to shift the way that you want it to shift. So I'm not going to give away all of my long spent knowledge and tried and true, you know, learning the old fashioned way. I haven't taken whoopsies, sorry guys. I haven't taken any classes. Um, I, I got the system when I was young, I was still in college, and I really wanted to make my V10 excursion run right, and what I found out later was that, and this is tying into what I'm about to tell you, is that HP Tuners doesn't support my ECU and my excursion. Well, that's a little bit of a letdown. Well, it opened up the door for me to start tuning a couple of my buddies' trucks, and one of those trucks became my truck. Um, my 60 was, this is the factory tune off the, my 60 to 2002, um, 2500 HD 60, 410 gear, uh, 480, obviously six liter truck engine. Okay. My buddy has an 01. I tuned his, uh, I tuned his O tune, or I am tuning his 01. He has a 2454, which I might show you the tune of on the video maybe not because i'm not sure it's really relevant the point of the matter is is that chevy chevy has a very unique and awesome philosophy they use basically the same ecu from a corvette to a pickup truck what that means is all the things that the corvette got to enjoy tuning um and in the case of the engine architecture aftermarket components camshafts heads you know all that stuff it's all the same or it's all similar. It's of the same engine family, so it all interchanges. So what you have is you have a pickup truck that can be turned into a extremely high performance machine using a the aftermarket, b even what it already has. What the six zero and the five three and the four eight are starting with is not what they are in reality. What if you take the tune, the calibration, which is, you know, in front of me using HP tuners, for instance. Now there's EFI Live. There's also SCT. I've never used SCT. That's what will work on my excursion. And that's what I'll probably end up buying just so that I have, I mean, I could get it tuned. So I, I guess what I'm getting at is you could either have somebody, you might know somebody, you might meet somebody like me who has it and is competent enough to not break your stuff. So the key with the custom tuning is with a few changes here, I could break something. It is a real deal, um, you could screw something up heavily, especially if your engine is modified and you're, you have boost or you're spraying in nitrous or you just are running the engine at a higher RPM. If you have a hard knock at high RPM, you're talking about broken, you know, broken engine. Engines, the same engine that could last at 700 horse could break at 400 just because you had a knock, okay? So it's really important that, um, you know, that... 
you know what you're doing, or you have a shop that knows what they're doing. That, that would be the other option is you can take it to a dyno shop and have a dyno tuned, which is the best way to do it. Your, your ass is not a good dyno. Um, I don't have access to a dyno, so I had to learn the old-fashioned way, and I'm sure that there's maybe some more tweaks that could be done to get a little bit more power out if you put it on a dyno, and you really got to see down to the nitty-gritty of what was going on, um, you know, via the dyno, te the, you know, telling you the torque the engine's making and equi equating it into horsepower. So in a tune like I was getting at, so this is the OEM tune, unmodified. So we can see here it's a 6 liter, okay? There are eight cylinders, and then you have your total volume per cylinder, okay? The reason why that matters is we're going to go into airflow, okay? And we're going to go to uh, main VE table primary, okay? This is a chart which um, uh, shows you how much air or it shows the ECU how much air is in the engine at any given time based upon its total volume, which I just showed you in the engine tab where it said 6.0 and 0.7 liters. Okay, that is the engine's total volume. And the key with engines is a gas engine. They operate generally in vacuum, okay? If you put your hand over your mouth, make sure your hands are clean, and you suck air in, there's vacuum, right? Okay, now imagine your hand is a throttle blade, and your throttle, bl throttle blade is keeping the engine from running away, okay? You're restraining the engine with the throttle blade. Now, <clears throat> as you go up in RPM and manifold um, absolute pressure, so th there's going to be a sensor or a series of sensors that helps approximate the air pressure within the intake manifold, okay? Either going from vacuum well, this is all in vacuum. 105 or so kPa's is approximately atmosphere. 102, something like that, depending on your altitude, okay? All of this is operating in vacuum. Now, if I was to change the OS, you'd go in here to OS, okay? And you change to a two-bar or three-bar map. What that would mean is your map sensor, manifold air pressure sensor, would be able to read pressures in excess of atmosphere, okay? You and I are breathing, as you're watching our, my video, and I'm filming this video, we are breathing the atmosphere. Depending on your altitude, um, and depending on that barometric pressure that day, um, you are breathing a different amount of air pressure. And you don't really notice it, but your engine does. I mean, you, you would if you're at 14,000 feet, I guarantee you, because I've done it. 14,700 feet at the Continental Divide, well, on where the road is at the Continental Divide. Your engine feels it, let me tell you, and you feel it. If you go out for a walk to go see the scenery, you're going to be, you know, if you're from flatlands like I am at 900 feet, 750 to 900 feet is about what Michigan is generally, except for the porcupines, anyway. So the point of the matter is when you have, I will call this custom tuning or real tuning, you're actually able to change every single facet of the engine, okay? As you can see, the engine is most efficient right here. The 6.0 makes peak torque at 4,400 RPM. This is the stock tin, as shipped from Government Motors. As you can see, the engine flows its best right here. That means the combination of the intake manifold, the camshaft, the heads, the exhaust, all the parts of the engine that make it breathe, the in, or the intake tube and air filter, all the parts of the engine that make it breathe a certain amount of air, they add up to at 4,400 RPM approximately, making or flowing the most amount of air, being the most efficient. And therefore, peak torque occurs on a 6.0 with stock heads and all that fun stuff, camshaft, at about 4,400 RPM. If you had a big block, you'd be over here at 2,800 RPM with having peak torque or something. I'm just, you know, throwing out a basic number, okay? And as the RPM goes up, the engine is less efficient, okay? If you want to change camshafts or put higher flowing heads on, what you've done is you've changed the RPM to which the engine is most efficient. And horsepower is equal to torque times RPM to which it occurs at. So let's just say you made peak torque right here. You make 360 foot-pounds, okay? And you made it at 4,400. So 360 times 4,400 divided by 5,282 is, excuse me, 
5252, excuse me. 5,500. Oh my goodness. 5,252. My brain is being all over the place. 5,252. And that equals horsepower. Horsepower is a calculation that basically represents the engine's ability to make horsepower through the RPM range. The more torque, or excuse me, to make torque through the RPM range. Excuse me. If your engine is able to make more torque at higher RPMs, your horsepower number is going to be much higher. You would have to make, for instance, take a diesel. In order to make a whole lot of horsepower in a diesel, you have to make a phenomenal amount of torque at low RPM because a diesel is only capable of spinning so fast, okay? So in order to make 500 horse in a diesel, I mean, you're talking like 1,000 foot-pounds of torque at 2,800 RPM or something like that. You know, just throwing out a number. But that's in order to make that kind of power. So when you have tuning like this, or when you have the ability to tune like this, we can make the changes that are necessary to reflect exhaust improvements, headers, intake manifold, um, intake tube. I mean, it all really does make a difference. Now, people talk about, do you really need to have a tune if you just put a colder intake on? No, the engine's going to run fine. But it probably won't run fine at full throttle, okay? At a certain point designated by the tune, your engine references RPM, and what is in the cylinders, or in the man in the manifold, and deduces how much air is in the cylinders from this table. And it injects the proper amount of fuel to reflect that. At part throttle, within a reasonable amount of error, the long-term and short-term fuel trims will make up for a performance enhancement that is not reflected in here. Okay? Within reason. People put camshafts and LS is not knowing it. And the engine runs fine at part throttle. It sounds cool. But when they go full throttle, it starts spitting and sputtering. Or maybe it doesn't quite spit and sputter because it's a small camshaft. It's just a little bit better than stock. But they don't really feel the punch. Or they don't really feel the full enhancement of the camshaft. Because let's just say the camshaft brought out torque to 5200, okay? And now peak horsepower is made at 6400. Well, in reality, your engine's probably gobbling nearly... Maybe not nearly 100%, but probably more like, you know, 96, 97% of its efficiency out here at 6,400, let's just say. But right now, it only thinks it's gobbling up 92%, okay? That's, that's where you get to have the error, and it's a small error. But what it is, your engine runs lean. And one of the things I've learned with the more I've tuned things, the more I've tuned, the more I've learned how tolerant... LS engines are. They are phenomenally tolerant. My buddy had a series of fuel pumps go bad. And when they go bad, they usually went bad after going full throttle. And so you're sitting there at 4,000, you know, 4, 5,000, 6,000 RPM at full throttle and suddenly you use fuel volume. The pump still makes pressure at idle, but it lost volume. It couldn't supply the fuel. And instant knock because you went extremely lean. So I guess jumping around just a little bit, a little bit about gas engines that aren't dr gasoline direct injected. I'm not talking about direct injected engines like the new LT Chevys and the new bot or the new Coyotes, the five O's and some foreign engines. I'm talking about multi-port injected low pressure engines. You have a fuel pump at the tank or in between the tank if you have an aftermarket setup, and it supplies a certain amount of pressure. It supplies whatever it's going to supply through the regulator, to your fuel rails. Whatever your fuel rails have to give is what the injectors get, okay? So if you either run out of fuel where you drained your inject or you drained your fuel rails, or if there's not enough pressure there to push the fuel out of the injectors, you're going to have what you have. The injectors don't, they're not like a turkey baster. They don't just grab a whole bunch of, of fuel and shoot it in. They they take what's there and they open up and close. And the pressure that's behind them pushes fuel through them, okay? So if you don't have any volume there, therefore you don't have any pressure, you're going to have less fuel that goes in for a given opening period. The injectors are designed to open and close when they're commanded to by the computer. And the rate at which they're opening and closing is determined by how much fuel is, is uh, commanded by the ECU at that given moment. And so if they open up for, you know, a tenth of a millisecond, 
in at at 58 psi, that's going to be a whole lot more fuel than at 24 psi for a tenth of a millisecond. Okay, so I just want to get that out of the way. When one of the other so in here, hold on, I have to find my thing. Obviously, in HP tuners, you can come over here and you can adjust your uh, speed limiters. Okay, stock. You know, there's your speed limiter, or limit by fuel, limit by, you know. There's your speed limiters, okay? Obviously, that's one, uh, you know, it makes you feel better when you can go fast. Not legal to go that fast in any state in the United States, so you probably shouldn't do it, you know, blah, 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 blah. So, there are a ton of different options in here. Your tune knows your fuel tank capacity and when it... Um, you know, when it knows is low, okay? But in the trans is really where some of the magic happens. Let me get over here. So you can change the speeds at which you shift at full throttle, okay? And also the RPMs. So all of these different options allow you to specially tailor the calibration to the engine's power curve and the way it's actually performing. Just like if you're driving a manual transmission, you'd vary the way you shift a diesel versus the way you'd shift a Miata, okay? You would vary, you, you would change the way you drive the car. You might shift the Miata at 4,000 RPM when you're just accelerating normal, but you might shift a, uh, you know, a Camaro with an LS engine at 2,000 because you don't need to spin it to 4,000, you know what I'm saying? You have the torque to just get going. Well, you can change um, full throttle, part throttle, every little facet of the way this transmission operates. You have your different column selections. You have uh, performance is the tow haul button on a, you know, a truck. So you can have a different shift schedule for tow haul. This is the tow haul shift schedule at part throttle. And then, of course, you'd have your full throttle performance, performance for um, by RPM and by shift speed. You, you have your, um, you know, in tow haul, you'd be shifting. It's saying 5,200 RPM is what it shifts stock, Okay. And let's go over here. Looks like they, whoopsies, sorry guys. It's showing 4,800, I'm assuming because of, for longevity. Um, anyway, long story short. Everything in here can be changed. That differs from, say, a plug-in tuner from any number of brands that some of you may have bought and you're like, well, what the heck? Everybody says when I tune my LS, it gets really fast or performs really well, but I didn't really notice a difference. You probably didn't because they may have changed a couple little things. For instance, you can change right here, the full throttle enable, enable shift schedule. If you bump this down to 60 and then this down to, to, um, to disable at um, 55, Man, that would immediately make the truck feel a little bit zippier. And that's not even changing any of the actual functionality of the truck, okay? Literally, that's just making the trans downshift sooner, which is actually really good because if you want to get... Sorry, bump the phone. If you want to get going, you want to downshift. If you downshift earlier then the truck's going to be in the proper gear, which means it's going to be using more, it's going to make more torque at the RPM it's at, and therefore you're going to get going faster. So that's fine. Um, there's all kind of shift pressures, shift timing, how fast the, the, how fast the transmission shifts, okay? That's in, in tenths of a second. So four tenths, three tenths, 3.75 thousandths of a second. It, it's, it's all right there, okay? When you have a custom tune, you can change every little facet of how the engine runs. Um, you have your spark table. Um, you know, you have your cranking, you have your base table, which is over here somewhere. I'm trying to look for it. Uh, here you go. Here's your high octane table right here. So, oh my goodness. Get back here. So there's your table, okay? This green part is generally outside of the performance of the engine, unless you have boost okay generally speaking you're going to be over here at 0.72 to 0.8 okay so if you come over here at a six or 5200 rpm like 13 between 13 and 17 degrees and the computer interpolates between the two so if you're in between the two it figures itself out so 
The point of the matter is that's not very much timing. So you can see how a stock Chevy truck is really neutered. I mean, it's really, 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 really gutified. It is heavily, heavily, heavily gutted. And the shift schedule is a joke. I just was showing you that, but the shift schedule is a joke. My point of this entire conversation is when you have a custom tune made, Every little facet of it can be changed to suit you, the driver. Whether you like to play off-road, whether you like your towing, whether you use your truck all the time for towing, you could have a tow haul mode that was the most perfect tow. It would be like you were driving a manual transmission. When I tune my truck and my friend's truck, I, I tune it like it's a manual. If I was driving the truck at all these different RP or uh, you know throttle angles, which would be you know corresponding to how quickly I wanted to accelerate, I have the the, um, the shift schedule set up just like if it was driving a manual. So it actually is in the right gear when you ask it to be and when you want it to be. So that's how I approach the transmission tuning is how I drive a manual because, I mean, that's the fastest you're ever going to get because you're going to be in the right gear at the right time. You're not going to be pushing the throttle and hoping the transmission decides it wants to downshift, which is a lot because of how – did you see how it had an 85% enable? Did you guys see that when I was over on uh, – Shift scheduling right here. You have to be at 85% throttle. TPS is throttle position. You have to be at 85% throttle for the transmission to decide it wants to go into full throttle shift schedules. Okay? That's a whole lot of throttle. If you knock that down to, to 70 or 65 or 67%, you're just going to be able to get through city traffic a whole lot better. And so you, you know the feeling how you have to freaking floor the thing to get it to go? Well, that goes away. Just literally, you could quickly take care of that. But I don't know if any of the... I don't want to throw companies under the bus. That's not what I'm trying to do here. But, you know, your standard box tuners you buy off the internet for 250 bucks or whatever. I don't know if they modify this. All I'm saying is they could modify a couple little things. Take your speed limiter off. Change your... Um, your revs per mile, you know, they, they allow you to change your tire size. Here's your revs per mile. You change your gear ratio to 456s. You could change it right there. Um... There's, they, they could allow you to change a few little things. They could have a, um, I know my tuner for my excursion that I've always used, you know, because I didn't have an opportunity to have custom tuning like this yet. I mean, I could, it just, it's a fair amount of money to haul off and get the SCT stuff for right now. Um, especially when I'm currently fixing up the truck. What am I trying to do here? I was trying to show you guys something here. Um, well, torque management, the truck's totally freaking neutered with torque management. It's pathetic. Um, every, and manual is, is shifting it, um, manually as far as I know. I'd have to think about that for a second just because I haven't tuned, um, our 6.0s in a while. Point being, uh, you have your, you can look at transmission diagnostic related stuff. Um, engine diagnostic, you have all your P codes here so you can turn off. If you want a cat delete, you can go down and cat delete it. There, just, and you won't have your engine trying to overfuel to take care of the cat. You just turn off. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly, engine, um, fuel, I think it's in fuel, lean fuel, temp control, temp control, catalyst. Yeah, so you turn off stuff like this so that you're not overfueling the cat when it isn't even there, so it makes your engine run rich. Anyway, there's just so much here. Your power, oh, here's, here's an important one. Um... So you have to be way up in the KPAs in order, sorry, in order to enable power enrichment. Power enrichment is enriching from stoke, okay? The stoichiometric ratio is uh, the correct amount of fuel to air. And uh, it's actually wrong. So I guess we should probably look at that super quick. Okay, right here. Oops, sorry guys, again. Stoichiometry, stoke AFR, 14.68. That is wrong, Here's the problem. If you have a truck older than 2007, it was not built to deal with ethanol. Not only is ethanol extremely corrosive, but it as it's about 11.2 to 1, if I'm not mistaken, stoichiometric ratio, where gasoline is 14.68 to 1. Okay? We have E10 at the pump. Every pump in the United States, unless it's a rec fuel pump, which they say you're not supposed to fill up a road vehicle with, I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, is not... 14.68, it's about 14.23, okay? Your truck or car, if it's older than 2007, and it isn't tuned, 
is running lean 100% of the time because the stoichiometric ratio is set here when in reality it's 14 point approximately 23, okay? If you set it to 14.23, your stoichiometric ratio is actually going to be approximately right. Okay, you could test your gasoline to find out just how much E is in your gas, but that'll at least get you close. You notice how your engine still runs basically okay? That's because it's not that big of a deal, except for a full throttle when you're trying to make horsepower. Being lean trying to make horsepower is very, 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 very bad. You're not going to make power, and you're going to run hot, and you get what's called spark knock. You guys with Ford V10s probably know about spark knock. Tick, 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 tick. Just ticky, ticky, ticky as you're going up a hill. That's spark knock. That's little teeny little fireballs on top of your pistons that are going boop, 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 boop. They're not real knock. They're just little teeny little knocks. Well, a big enough one of those, what happens is on top of the piston, there is a layer of like a superheated gas. It's like a plasma. And it literally protects the piston, ironically, from the superheated you know, heat from the, from the gasoline explosion. And when you have knock, what's actually happening is the knock blows the that superheated material away and it uninsulates the piston from the heat because aluminum is a lower melting point than the heat of a combustion chamber. So it literally blows that protective layer away. And when you do that, you melt the piston with the heat of the combustion chamber. So, you know, excuse me, food for thought. Um, this is the stock tune, so I'm, I'm a, not going to save it when I close out of this because I've, you know, screwed around a couple things. Let's see here. So, stoichiometry is wrong. Power enrichment, um, cold. You have to be at 90% throttle to enable power enrichment, okay? 90 freaking percent throttle, okay? The delay, if I'm not mistaken, below this value, Okay. When does your 6.0 get over 5,500 RPM? When? When does it get over? Never. They have disabled power enrichment in your 6.0. And the delay is 60 freaking seconds, okay? This is what is wrong here. And I'm, it's annoying because there are a lot of people that don't even know that this is going on. Your engine is capable of so much more than 300 horsepower. It's not even funny, Okay? And it's literally all in the calibration. That's it. And I'm kind of give I gave away some of the secrets, but you know there there's a lot more here. Like you know, but this is just making your engine run right. Like your engine isn't even running right. That's what I'm getting at. Your five three, your four eight, and your half tons, your six zero. Oh, the thing about it is, you go make a ton of power in your five three and your four eight, you might break your four sixty e. So you need to keep that in mind that you have a transmission dilemma. Something to think about with but with a four eighty e. In 2500 HD, it is totally robust. So, this is kind of my spiel on tuning. There is just so much, and, and some of you might be coming in here not even knowing that this stuff exists, and they're like, wow. Um, let's see here, idle. So, and you can change. So, if you want to have a high idle, my buddy likes to have a high idle in the morning. So, in park, park neutral, he likes like 1300 RPM right here until it gets to 68 just because he just likes to let his truck warm up for a few minutes just you know and he likes to hear the straight pipe exhaust you, you know how it is so he wants to have a high idle that's how you do it um it's literally all here so you can have a tuner the cost of the credits are 100 for tuning a chevy truck um or an 05 or up excursion or, or god dang it excuse me an 05 or up f series not excursion Excursion always got the EEC-IV4 ECU. In 2005, the newer V10s, the 3Vs, got the newer ECU, which is unlockable via HP tuners. And the Excursion went out of production in 05. So my point is, even the 05 Excursion didn't get the, um, you know, it didn't get the 3V and it didn't get the ECU. 3V is in 3-valve. So my point is, is that whether you got a Dodge, whether you got a Ford, whether you got a Chevy, and I don't know about Dodges, I haven't tuned a Dodge yet. I'm going to be tuning a Dodge here shortly. Um, a half ton Dodge. There is so much in here that you can do to make your engine run better. And then when you want to do more than just run better, you want to make some more power, it's all here too. So let's see here. Brain is injector control, 
uh, flow rate. So you can come in here and change your flow rate on your injectors, okay? You can change your flow rate versus volts. Um, you can change uh, injector offset versus volts. So the injector does different things when it has low or high voltage, okay? And the ECU needs to know that because if you start your truck, a lot of times it might crank, but it won't start when it's low or the ECU won't let it crank because it knows that the injector does crazy things when you have low voltage. So my point is, is that when you change injectors, you need to tune for, the, excuse me, tune for the injectors. And that's all in here too. So I really want to just do an overview because I see so much and I'm sure I probably didn't convey it right, you know, because I'm not perfect. Convey the power of HP tuners. I don't, HP tuners isn't paying me, you know, and I don't, you know, not yet do tunes for money. I just, I do it to enjoy it. I like helping my buddies and I like going fast and stuff like that. So I'm not trying to sell anything. I have nothing to sell you. So well, I just wanted to tell you, you tell you guys what is out there, um, especially for your 99 to 07 trucks, uh, Chevy trucks specifically, because that's what I have my experience on is dealing with those trucks. Um, eventually I'll be tuning my X's, like I said, and I, my dad has some beater old half ton Dodge. So we rebuilt the engine on just cause we were going to have some fun doing it. So be tuning that truck too. And I'm sure that'll be on the channel as well. So I wanted to give you guys an overview of the power of HP tuners and tuning platforms like it. If you have an old engine you put and you want to look at modern fuel injection, you could get Holly, you could get Fuel Air Spark Technologies, you could get Edelbrock has a San Juan ECU. There are literally tons of different options and they're all going to look similar to this. You're, you have an RPM input so that your, um, your ECU understands what RPM your engine is spinning. And you have a, you're going to have some way that the engine is deducing how much air is in it at any given time. And you're going to be able to put in your stoichiometric ratio. So if you're running methanol or if you're running uh, ethanol, E85, e, um, full ethanol, it, there, the list could go on and on. And really, it doesn't matter what fuel you're running because all you're going to do right here is change your stoichiometric ratio. That's what doing fuels is. Methanol is like six and a half to one or something like that. Gasoline is... 14 points, you know, 6, 8 approximately. E10 is about 14.23. E85 is like 11.8 or something like that. So point of the matter is there's a whole bunch of different fuels you could be running. You can change it right here. And that that is an overarching um, data point that's used in the whole rest of this calculation. So what it'll do is um, either it would be grams, um, measured in uh, some sort of grams or something like that, uh, or just pressure density, air pressure density in your manifold, and it'll jump off of your displacement per cylinder, and based upon RPM, it'll know how much air it's gobbling per, you know, revolution, and it'll shoot in the correct amount of fuel. So the point is, is that any of these tuning platforms or ECU strategies are all doing really the same thing with varying levels of complexity. When you get into a, like a six-speed or an eight-speed Dodge or a Chevy Trans, there's obviously a whole ton. Oopsies, hold on. Trans shift scheduling. There's a whole ton of um, of options. So if I'm not mistaken. This would be, yeah, this is putting it in first gear on the column. But well, my coffee maker is blinking at me. D1 is putting it on the column, um, you know, in, in one. D2 is putting it in two, so it allows you to use one and two, if I'm not mistaken. One, two, shift, um, throttle position. Uh, well, it looks like it's holding it in. Well, whatever. I'll, I'll have to look that over a little bit. But all these different... Um, you know, I never, ever, ever put it in anything other but drive. I'll just tell you that right now. <laughs> I've always been like that. Um, point being, there you go. You have four low, so you can have shift, shift, oh boy, shift scheduling in four low. So this is in miles an hour, and it'll let you shift through gears in four low, and then four low RPM. So it lets you go 4,400 RPM, and that's likely a torque limit on the rear axle so that you don't go full throttle at 5,500 RPM and end up, you know, making a piss ton of torque to the rear axle, you know. So 4,400 RPM happens to correspond with peak torque. That's interesting. So maybe they just want you to um, get to peak torque and four low, and that's it for, I'm assuming, drivetrain abuse. Anyway, go back. 
So, point is, is that's a little bit of an overview of HP tuners, what it can do, what the capability is. I left a whole bunch kind of for you to figure out because there's tuners that have their own philosophies and I have my own philosophy and, you know, it's right in my eyes, but it might not be right in somebody else's eyes. So I don't want to, you know, I'm not trying to start a stir. I'm trying to just simply inform what HP tuners can do and what other tuning platforms can do, whether you want to use EFI Live or if your tuner uses EFI Live, you know, so be it. Same, same idea of strategy. It's just trying to get the engine to run correctly and your transmission to shift at the right time. So there's just so much that can happen. Um, aftermarket tuners um, have, or aftermarket, excuse me, aftermarket uh, tuning solutions, uh, like e complete ECUs. Some of them have traction control that is time-based so or distance-based where you could launch the car and depending on what points of the track, you could have different amounts of boost, like they have internal bo uh, boost controllers so you can have you know more boost as you go down the track. Um, but at the same time, you might be getting out of um, you know where the rubber's laid down where you might actually have to pull power top end. So it's going to depend on, at higher speed, it, you're going to be less likely to be able to spin the tires with a given amount of torque, right? It makes sense. But at the same time, when you get past where the rubber's left down at the starting line, the first, say, couple hundred feet, um, the traction on the road surface is probably going to drop. So, you know, they're playing that game too. So there's, all, there's um, aftermarket ECUs that control multiple stages of nitrous, and they also enrich for nitrous, so you can do a dry kit. Um, so the ECU controls the nitrous going in and it knows how much is going in and then it, enrich, it enriches your engine to the correct amount so you don't have to run a separate fuel system to shoot a wet kit in. A wet kit would be nitrous plus fuel. Um, so there's just all kinds of options out there. Depends on what you want to do and, um, you know, but if you're talking about a stock truck or making stock-like performance camshaft heads, Headers, that's what I did in my, or I'm doing my 6.0. It's going to be in, you know, the truck fairly shortly. Um, re relatively de a decent camshaft, ported stock heads. Um, stock can take a manifold for now. It'll, I'll eventually be going to something else. Um, headers, it'll have a higher stall converter, but still a locking torque converter. I'm going to have to go to a triple, um, triple um, disc clutch in the locking torque converter component or portion. Um, because of the torque the engine's going to make. I don't want to break, you know, the stock one. The stock one's still really good. So I could either use it for a different project or I could sell it. I, I don't want to just waste it, you know, because I know it's not going to hold. Um, so, yeah, there's just... I wanted to give you guys an overview, and I'm in, I, it's something I care about. It's something I'm interested in, and most of the channel so far has been about my truck, and this is some other stuff that I enjoy doing, so I wanted to make a video about it. I see that it's getting on in time, um, for those of you who stick around, thank you. I'm sorry for being so long-winded, but I'm relatively passionate about this. It's something I care about and something I really enjoy doing. Uh, and I wanted to give you guys a little bit of overview, um, of what is in an HP tuners or a calibration that you're able to look at through HP tuners. Um, so we can do, um, in the future, may, if, you know, this video gets, throw up a like if you enjoyed it. If you want to see more about tuning, be my pleasure and we could go into more depth we could get a vehicle and straight up tune it from day one and i'll put it all on the channel if you want to um anyway i got interrupted by a call i'll call him back in a second um if you want to see more of tuning like the video of course please like my videos if you like them um throw up a comment if you want to see more about tuning i'd be happy to go into more depth um Anyway, thank you so much for staying tuned for this long. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, this has been Great Lakes Power Stroke, and thank you guys for coming. I, I really hope some of you guys stuck around for the whole thing because I know it might be a little long-winded for people who don't give a flying crap about tuning. But, you know, for those of you who are interested or don't know how your truck's, you know, performing or, you know, how it could perform, you know, it gives you a little bit of idea what you're looking at. Okay, thanks, everybody. Bye.